Hey everybody, check out these advanced tips and tricks for making your cinch buckle not slip. First, let's look at the two threading methods. One threading method wraps around the buckle like this. The other threading method does several lark's head and creates this Prusik type. So, this one right here, this is not a good idea. And I'll tell you why. Because you want the webbing to be the centering mechanism of the buckle, not the lines to the hammock. So this design, when it hangs in the hammock, as the sway motion happens, this end right here is larks headed into your hammock, and as the sway motion happens, one of these lines gets pulled harder than the other. And what will happen is, you'll get a situation like this. As you can see, this knot is no longer centered, and it's trying to hold the buckle at an angle. So the webbing wants to go straight, but it can't because the buckle is being held at an angle. And as the hammock sways, these two lines are trying to hold the buckle straight. And so where is the pivot going to happen? The pivot is going to happen at the toggle. So as the hammock is moving, these two lines are trying to lock the buckle in position. And the toggle has to move. So when you first install this in your hammock, and you give it a good pull and center everything, you might notice, okay, the webbing locks up really good. And it does because these two lines are controlling the buckle. But you want the buckle to be controlled by the webbing because the webbing needs to be parallel with the buckle and the, the webbing is what locks into the buckle. Now with this design, as the hammock sways, the buckle can pivot on this within this confined arc so that that way the pivot can happen and the toggle and buckle can hang out on the same little plane as the webbing does. With this one, as you use it, as it gets pulled into this gathered end of the hammock, say my fingers represent the gathered end, you can see one side gets tight and one side gets loose. And if this buckle is trying to be held in line with these two strands, the pivot is going to have to happen here, which will be at the webbing and at the toggle. So we don't, we don't want that. Um, the only way to make sure this one's going to work really good for you is every time you hang your hammock, get in here and adjust these coils so each of these two lines are the same. Okay, next up, here's the thing I mentioned in a previous video. You just take a loop of cord and do a little prusik, kind of like what you've done here, and look at this. This locks the toggle from moving. Of course, you would want to do it on both sides. And now you can also do this with just a single piece of cord. Let me show you that one. So we're going to take the cinch buckle with the webbing removed from it. And take your little loop of cord, go over the cinch buckle like this. And then come back through. You can see what I'm doing. I'm beginning to make a little lark set. Now I can keep doing that. Go over the buckle again. And then come back through. And then I'll go over and through one more time. So as you can see now, all these little coils are going to limit the deflection that this little toggle can have. So let's put the webbing back through here and see how this looks. So as you can see, now this now this toggle, as soon as I let a little free slack in the webbing, it just bumps up against those coils and it's really going to have a difficult time getting sideways. So my lockup is going to happen faster because the toggle, instead of being up here, and having to travel from up here down to the lock, it only has to travel this short distance. And if there's ever any weird forces on the buckle making it go sideways like this, as you can see, it's going to be a lot more difficult for that buckle to turn sideways. And I've just added a little loop of cord, which will also add an additional water break, and it'll make a cool little grab handle for when I'm adjusting. And also, if you do it long enough, this little extra loop, you can actually grab your free piece that's hanging through there. You can actually do both pieces and let it manage the exiting 
exiting piece of webbing. So now you see this exiting piece of webbing, the free piece, it's just getting managed and held in a parallel position on its exit. So it's going to lock up even faster and have less ability basically for this free piece to go out here or go out here because your little extra loop is holding on to it. Of course, that's optional and probably not even necessary because once you once you take up the space on these two little bars, this buckle will lock up so much better. Here's another neat little thing you can do. Instead of adding a normal cord, like this right here is a piece of lash it, you can take some shock cord and do your little loop around here. So I'm going to do a Prusik. Whoops. So I'm using shock cord and I'm making a Prusik around here with my shock cord loop. This is a nice long shock cord loop. I would probably only go about 10 inches total. But if I do one large head, and this is exactly how I did the yellow one, I'm going to do one more. So now it's turned into a Prusik. And since this is a shock cord, it's going to have some spring action to it. So I could do another loop, and then I would have spring action pushing this buckle down. So even if I didn't have weight in the hammock lining up those two straps, this little shock cord piece would be gently pushing the toggle up against the bottom frame of the buckle and thereby keeping the webbing from doing anything that would cause it to slip later. So this shock cord that I have is a 330 seconds. So I'm going to do one more loop to show you guys how this would look. So now we have a Prusik of shock cord hanging out on here. And as you can see, it has it has snugged it has snugged that little guy up against there. So to make the buckle work better, you can add material with a little Prusik, which will add a cool water break. You can do it like this. You can do it like this. And you can also, if you have this type of threading on your cinch buckle, I recommend switching over to this style, or at the very minimum, whenever you set your hammock up, make sure these two lines are the same. Because with this one, it really tries to control the buckle via the hammock. And by doing that, as the hammock moves, you're, you're forcing this buckle to try to stay square with these two lines, and it will create turning motion of this toggle. It will seem to lock up quicker when you first install it, and you might think, oh wow, this buckle, that was the, not the right way. But as you use the hammock, one of these lines will get longer, and then the webbing will no longer be able to control the centering of the buckle. So, those are some cool methods. I hope you liked it. Uh, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.